All right, hello everybody. Welcome to our next lesson here. This is Trouble in Russia. This is for our unit or the unit, Revolution and Resistance. So our objectives and standards to explain situations that arose before the Russian Revolution and to summarize the events of the March Revolution. And take a moment there to read the standards, if you would, please. And our desired result is what events caused trouble in Russia. So think about some of the things we're going to talk about in the lesson that caused trouble in Russia that led to um, the Russian Revolution. <clears throat> so revolution and waiting. From 1904 to 1917, Russia is going to face uh, a lot of problems. Russia had recently become involved with the Japanese in a conflict known as the Russo-Japanese War, the Russo-Japanese War, however way you want to say it. Um, and that this picture up here shows you uh, Russian troops um, attacking a Japanese train or Japanese troops. Uh, a little hard to see, but there's a Japanese flag up here on the train, and these are Russian troops here. Uh, they were fighting over control of a railroad and territory and things like that. Um, so either way, in the beginning, early parts of the 1900s, uh, the Russia and Japan are going to go to war. Now, there's a lot of tension um, during the war and after the war uh, at the response of the large amount of lives lost in the conflict by the Russians. Uh, Russia will actually technically um, kind of lose this war to Japan and uh, lose what they were looking for. So many Russians are not happy with um, the outcome of this, this struggle. So the demands of the people. On January 22, 1905, around 200,000 workers and peasants marched on the Tsar's Winter Palace. Now, the Tsar was the leader of Russia. This is Tsar Nicholas II at the time. So they're going to march on his Winter Palace. And they're going to demand better working conditions. Um, a national legislature that is a legislature, excuse me, that is elected by the people and more personal freedoms in Russia. Now, Nicholas II's generals ordered troops to actually fire on the crowd. Um, in this picture here, you can see, um, it's a little hard to see, but here are some, it looks like some Russian troops um, attacking the crowd of people. Again, there's men, women, children, elderly people, uh, innocent people in this crowd, and they were just peacefully protesting, basically. And more than 1,000 people were wounded and hundreds were killed. And this will become known as Bloody Sunday. And this picture here is from 1905 by Wojciech Kauzak, uh, 1856 to 1942. So again, this kind of shows you uh, the, the results of Bloody Sunday. And again, this is going to upset a lot of people too, saying, hey, these were innocent people just protesting for some things. And, you know, the Tsar had his troops attack uh, the people. So changes in the Tsar. The events of Bloody Sunday uh, resulted in protests around Russia, and the Tsar is actually going to eventually agree to the creation of a national legislature known as the Duma, and that's a picture of Tsar Nicholas II there. Um, the Duma will hold its first meeting in May of 1906, um, and it did have a lot of moderates, people who were kind of middle of the road in terms of their views and beliefs, um, but the Tsar actually refused to... Um, to limit his power uh, when the Duma kind of suggested that maybe he should have some of his power taken away. Uh, Tsar Nicholas II refuses and he actually dismisses the legislature after about 10 weeks and says, ah, I'm not going to listen to you. We're not going to have this anymore. So global conflict in Russia. We just got done talking about the First World War um, and the First World War also brought trouble to, Ru to the Russians. Uh, Russia was really not prepared to fight such a massive war. Remember, we said Russia was really not an industrialized country, didn't have a lot of technology um, that many other European countries had and others had. Um, and many Russians died as a result of their unpreparedness. The Tsar will actually move his headquarters to the war front to try to inspire and lead and support his troops. And while he does this, he lets his wife, Tsarina, um, her name's Alexandra, to run the government. So he leaves his wife pretty much in Russia, um, you know, a, 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 in, in charge of the Russian, not in charge of the Russian government, but basically to kind of run things while he's away. So trouble at home. Now, 
his wife, Alexandra, she refused to listen to the Tsar's advisors on what should be done. Instead, she's going to follow the advice of a self-proclaimed quote-unquote holy man known as Rasputin. That's his picture here. Now, the reason that she really kind of listened to him was that she had healed uh, the son of the Tsar and his wife. His name was Alexis. Uh, he had some um, health problems, and as gratitude or thanking him for this, he was allowed to make key political decisions. Now, Rasputin is going to oppose any reforms or any changes that are suggested, and he's going to give his friends political positions. Now, he will be later murdered by a group of nobles in 1916, um, but Russia's kind of, at this point, already on the verge of collapse. The Russian soldiers, like we said um, when we talked about World War I, are going to begin to mutiny or, you know, kind of refuse to, um, you know, continue to fight and serve under the Tsar. And also supply shortages because of the war, at, um, people at home are going to struggle. In March of 1917, women textile workers in Petrograd are going to lead a strike across the city. Within the next five days, there's going to be riots over fuel and bread. The troops were ordered to fire on the protesters. Uh, but actually, instead of firing the protesters, the troops actually joined the people in their protest and in their um, strike um, against the government. So the troops actually say, no, nah, we're going to join the people. So this small protest that was led by these women textile workers uh, in Petrograd actually leads to um, a large call for change. So Nicholas II will step aside. Protest are going to spread across Russia, and this becomes known as the March Revolution. Um, Nicholas II, he will abdicate or give up his throne as Tsar, and unfortunately, a year later, uh, revolutionaries will actually execute the Tsar and his family. So this is Tsar Nicholas II and his family. Unfortunately, they will all be murdered. You might know um, the story of Anastasia, the Russian princess who um, was maybe supposed to have escaped. Um, this execution of her and her family, but um, I don't know if there's any real historical fact that I've still heard things too that maybe she did escape, maybe she didn't. Um, I think most people agree that she was unfortunately killed as well. So either way, the Tsar and his family will be executed, and the March Revolution um, will be a success in the sense that it ended the, re uh, the regime of the Tsar, so it got rid of the Tsar and the Tsar's powers, but Russia will now be left uh, without a government. So the plan to establish a government, the Duma, um, remember this was the, you know, the elected legislature that had been demanded and established by Tsar Nicholas II. He's got, the Duma is going to establish a temporary government or a provisional government, and that's going to be led by this man here, uh, Alexander Kerensky. Now, he is going to say we are going to continue to support uh, fighting and sending Russian troops to the war. Again, remember, the people were tired, the troops were tired, so this is going to cost him the support of the people and the soldiers, and the Russian citizens are just going to grow tired of the war and no supplies. The peasants are also going to demand land, workers are going to become more radical, and socialist radicals are going to form something called Soviets, and these are local councils that consisted of pretty much everybody who was against the government, uh, workers, peasants, soldiers, um, and they are called Soviets. And these Soviets, these, these groups, actually had more power than the provisional government. And with that, the Bolsheviks uh, are going to hope that Lenin, who uh, is um, exiled kind of in Switzerland, um, they hope that Lenin will return to Russia and uh, take over Russia and restore Russia to some type of, you know, uh, power and things like that. And Lenin will return in April of 1917, and that will eventually lead us to um, more about the Russian Revolution. 
All right, so think about what events kind of caused some trouble in Russia, some of the things we talked about in the lesson, um, and that will hopefully uh, help you answer your question at the end of, uh, of this assignment here. All right, so have a good rest of your day or night, and I'll talk to you soon.